All right, hey, welcome back to a new video. You know, one video that I like to watch on YouTube when I watch some YouTube is Q and A's. I don't know why I like them, but it's like, uh, you know, sometimes the background stories can be really interesting, and usually for celebrities, and it's uh, interesting to watch. So I thought I'd do one like that, and I asked you to ask me questions. So on Instagram and on YouTube, I said, hey, ask me a question. And the only requirement for it to be a question was that it had to be a question. Nothing like, uh, you know, people are like, hey, do a video on how you make a video. That's not a question. It's like Jeopardy. You got to, you know, form it in, in the uh, form of a question. That's how, what a question. Anyways, so I grabbed a bunch. I haven't prepared any answers. It's on the spot. We'll just go in. We'll go in and run through it and have fun. But just quickly, I have one question for you. Can you click like on the video? That's great. Let's begin. Here we go. I said, ask me a question for a future YouTube video. That's all I said. Brandon Anderson asked, how long did it take you to develop good rhythm and timing? Was there ever a moment you felt it click into place or was it a slow ongoing process asking for a friend? Well, I don't know what channel you're watching because I don't have good timing. No, I, that's that's not totally true. I think um, it's interesting. I think uh, it, it clicks better if you play live with a band. And I think that's when it started working for me. I find my timing, my rhythm, I have terrible rhythm when it comes to playing cover songs and songs that aren't mine. When I'm trying to recreate something, if it's my own original music, I find I can do that better. And I have terrible drumming. I can't drum, so my rhythm's actually not great. Anyways, hope that helps. This is Ode Music. Your channel has your personal name, so your goal isn't only gear stuff, right? No, it's, it's just uh, gear stuff. And he went on to ask about 18 questions, but uh, so my channel used to be called Lando 27 Music, and it was for about four years. And then I decided at one point, you know what? I'm not just some random number and made up name. I'm a real person. This is me. So this is me. This is Landon Bailey, and that's, I'm me. This is, uh, you know, that's what I am. Sometimes my videos aren't necessarily 100% music. They might have some other little elements, but I tend to keep it music focused because that's really what I enjoy. So I hope that's uh, the answer. What? Upside 40 says, as a self-professed Telecaster guy, do you, one, have a preferred tone wood, and two, favorite pickup configuration? Um, I, for the tone wood one, I don't really believe in tone wood for electric guitars. I mean, to a level that's discernible to the ear. I just don't think it's a thing. I like light guitars, so I like light wood. And for pickups, I like Twisted Telly single coils. Oh, here's a, here's an interesting one. Darth Vader Lives, I was gonna say Lives. I'll go with Lives. Darth Vader Lives, do a bunch of guitar-themed Would You Rather. So he's done a bunch of Would You Rathers, which are questions. I'll do a couple of them here. Would you rather play a guitar with a tapped truss rod or a guitar that always has a broken string? I'm going to I'm going to guess that that means broken truss rod. I don't know what a tapped truss rod is. Snap Oh, snapped. It's going to be snapped. Um oh, broken string for sure. And he has a bunch. Oh, I'll do one more. Would you rather gig with an amp with a torn speaker or a beautifully clean amp with an always on metal zone? Uh, I'd go with the torn speaker for that one. Okay. Barry H, Barry underscore H, I want to be clear. We don't want to Mix it up with other, because other Barry H's would be like, that's me. If you could only have four pedals. All right, let's try that again. If I'm not cutting that out. This is going to be unfiltered. If you could only have four pedals and you are playing a telly, of course, what would you choose? What would those pedals be? I can't read. All right, uh, they'd be what I'm, what's on my pedal board right now. I had a Joyo Sweet Baby Overdrive, a Tube Screamer Mini, a Boss SD1, and a Tuner Pedal. So I hope that's a good answer for that. Why, why do I keep saying that? It's the right, it's perfect. These are perfect answers. MSR Alexi, I was gonna say Mrs., but maybe you spelled Mrs. wrong. Is it good to heavily modify a guitar, be it pickups, components, body, even to make it sound better, or even to get some prestige, or just to make it look different? That's four questions. Is it, is it good to heavily modify a guitar? Sure, I think so. I think uh, modifying a guitar, can be really fun. I actually think when you modify a guitar, you kind of make it your own and you really get into the guts of the guitar and then you feel more connected with it. Does that make sense? Who cares? All right, Goku808 says, what's your creating process? 
Does the gear follow you creative, your creative drive or does your creativity get inspired by the gear? Uh, it's, it's a mix. For example, the, the most recent thing, the whole Beatles Get Back documentary, I was inspired by a guitar and then that guitar, the Epiphone Casino, inspired me to play a bunch of Beatles music. So that's, that one worked that way. Sometimes it's the gear, sometimes it's music that I like that makes me want to play a certain type of music. If it's songwriting, that's, that's developed a number of different ways. It can be a, a theme, something that you're uh, frustrated about or something emotional that you want to get out. Sometimes it's just random words that you've added to music that you've created. So there's a whole bunch of different varieties of, uh, of answers to that. Squatch Watts says, a Yamaha or Ibanez guitar review would be nice. Not a question. So my question would be, there we go. Is it better than a telly? Um, Yamaha or Ibanez guitar review, is it better than a telly? I'm gonna say no, because nothing, nope. Armando Bernard says, would you hunt for a vintage guitar or do you like mostly new stuff? I like mostly new stuff. Uh, I don't really come across too much vintage instruments. I can't really think of many stores locally that have vintage instruments and they tend to cost way too much, I think, for, for what you get. So that's just my thoughts. And I, I'm assuming you're not talking about vintage the brand. You're talking about you're talking about vintage as in old because you said new. So that's where I'll go with that. Tona 2.8 says, hey, he didn't say that. I made that up. I always enjoy your photos. What kind of camera gear do you use? Why don't I take more photos of my guitars? Uh, I'll answer the first one because I don't know the second answer. I typically use this phone, which is... Uh, it's a Samsung Galaxy S10. I'm three years behind in the smartphone world. I used to be all caught up with gear like that, but not anymore, who cares? And more recently, I have a pair of Sony ZV-E10s, and I use those for a lot of photos as well. So, so Samsungs and Sonys. Lost says, what are your overall thoughts on Gibson? I'd have to say I'm kind of indifferent. Uh, there's a number of years where there was a lot of bad press and all these videos and I kind of jumped on the bandwagon a little bit talking about Gibson even though I didn't know what I was talking about. I was just trying to get the YouTube videos that are popular going but that didn't work out. So that's that's a lesson. Don't, don't go for that. I, I bought my first Gibson recently. It's a Gibson SG standard and I really like it. I'm kind of just interested in checking out some of the instruments. They are very expensive and uh, that's, that's what I think about Gibson. It's got the name, right? It's got the history. Bo Bobby Fussell, how do you set up an attenuator? Does it require a separate speaker enclosure in addition to my combo amps? Trying to tame the beasts for bedroom playing practice. An attenuator, I do not know. I've never had one, so I don't know. I I'm guessing you need a cabinet and a, a head that are separate and it goes between the two. I don't know. I'm not gonna make up answers for stuff I don't know. So real, I won't even Google it. Guitar Habit, do you ever think about playing in a band again? What about something small like a duo? I do, I do think about it. Uh, the past couple of years, it's kind of, uh, the whole idea of playing out live has disappeared. So maybe in the future again, I don't really know, but uh, maybe one day. People ask me, they're like, why did you stop playing in a band? And mainly life, just got busy with family and kids and uh, just happens, so. Also, all the we used to fight all the band members, we used to fist fight all the time. Nah, that's, I made that up. Julio, or Julio, Roxas says, what do you think about threaded inserts on guitar necks? Threaded inserts on guitar necks. I don't think about them because I don't know what it is. Lomo Holga says, what is your take workflow on home recording? I'll say what my workflow is uh, for home recording. I haven't done too much recently, but let's say for a, a I'm gonna record a video and I wanna record some guitar, maybe a backing track. Uh, I'll use something like GarageBand or Logic. I have either one. If I wanna do something quick, I'll use GarageBand. If I wanna spend more time and get a nicer sound, I'll use Logic. Basically, I usually try to find a, a groove, like a drum beat first. That's usually where I start. I'll either write my own bass line and, and record some bass, or I'll use a, a built-in looper, not a looper, loops that are, into, uh, that are built into GarageBand and Logic and dump those in and have that, and then add the guitars on top of that. So it's like drums, bass, guitar. Is that good? Is that good? That's excellent. That's the best answer. Oh, here's a good question. These, because none of them have been good until this one. Sean Harris, which microphones do you use for videos and live streams? Uh, for my videos right now, 
I'm using a, well, you know what, I'll, I'll bring it down for a cameo. Here we go. This is an Audio Technica, uh, it's Audio Technica AT2021. And it's a, it's a condenser microphone. For my live streams, I just recently started using this one. This is a Sennheiser. I always get the name wrong. You know, it's got a four and a two and a one in it. Where's the name? Is it on here? I think it's in here somewhere. Oh, there we go. This is Sennheiser MD4212. And uh, I like that one. This, this pop filter didn't come with it, or the sponge or whatever you call these. If I am walking around with a camera, then I will use a Shure VP, VP83 lens hopper. And this goes on top of the camera. There you go. So that's, that's my go-to's. Dan M asks, what is your holy grail guitar? Uh, it's probably changed over the years, but currently right now it would be a Rosewood Telecaster, like something George Harrison owned in uh, the Get Back era, all Rosewood. Maybe not the one he has, so maybe one of the custom shop reissues or models that they, they did with the, uh, man, it's t getting so excited thinking about it. The uh, weight relief, they did some chambered body on it, which I would want because I hate heavy guitars. Gringo Green asks, how about a pedal video of chorus versus flanger versus a uh, chorus versus a flanger versus a phaser? How about no? That was a question though, so no, the answer is no. Bill Marlowe, if you could only play one guitar for the rest of your life, which of your Telecasters would you choose? Or maybe the Jazzmaster. It would probably be the Dark Knight Telecaster the uh, Fender American Professional 2 Dark Knight Telecaster. I had to choose one. That's that's probably the answer right now. Brian O says, how about an acoustic guitar pickup shootout? Uh, no, that's a lot of work. I don't even know how to do that. My acoustic guitar has a built-in piezo Fishman transducer under the bridge. I don't know how I'd switch that out, so. Xenon Studio says, who is Bill? If you can't remember, look for who's Bill timestamp in a video of yours. I can't remember which video exactly. Well, that's gonna be tough. So I could probably search for that, but um, I don't know who Bill is. I can't remember. It must be a joke. Inside joke that I don't even rem remember. All right, John Koch. I'm assuming that's how you say the last name. What do you like on your toast? Hey, that's actually an interesting question. I like a little bit of butter and then raspberry jam or strawberry jam. William Kennan Jr. says, what is a good looper pedal? I think a good looper pedal is one that works well, but if you're looking for an exact, like a, a model to use, I have an EHX, what the hell is it called? I have a Nano Looper 360. I think it's pretty good. If you posted the question on Instagram, I don't see the username, so. They're just gonna be random questions from nobody. They could be made up this at this point. Where is it? That's, that's the question everybody's asking. I'm gonna say why? Have you played Gretsch guitars? No, I haven't, and uh, it's really hard to spell the word Gretsch, so that's the main reason. How much music theory do you know? I don't know how to answer that. I know, I know scales. I know some. Pent I know the pentatonic scales, major and minor. I know some. I know all the basic chords. I know octaves. I know. I don't know. I don't know what I know. How, well, how much theory? How much music theory do I not know? I think that's a better question. What is a good way to learn to sing while playing guitar, eh? That's a pretty good question. Best way would be to try to write your own songs on acoustic guitar. Try to try to write something that has a flow that the words make it easy. So write something simple. Always well, we start simple. That's what I'm gonna go with. How do you write your riffs? A lot of them are copies of riffs from famous bands. In general, I usually copy Radiohead. Some of my riffs are original from songs that I wrote years ago, so I'm just taking parts from songs that I wrote a long time ago. That's the easiest thing I find to do, because you don't, I don't usually screw up my own songs. If I do, that's pretty sad. What motivates you to keep making videos? Money. That's the main motivation. Hey, YouTube, you make money on YouTube. The whole creative process is fun to me. Creating a video, editing, and releasing a video it's much like writing a song and releasing a song. It's, it's the same kind of thing. And then the bonus part is you can make a little bit of money. And the other motivating part is YouTube is such a, 
a mystery. You never know what's going to be successful. So part of that is it's kind of like playing the lottery, except there's no money involved. You just kind of, it's your time and, and effort. So it's fun to think like, hey, this could be the one. This could be the thing that makes the, the channel explode or I don't know, you know, stuff like that. But the main thing that keeps me motivated is it's got to be something fun. I won't do videos that aren't fun. I thought this was a fun idea, so I'm doing this video. I had fun doing this. I like answering questions. I like the back and forth interactions, and uh, that's where we're going to do it. So, as always, play guitar and have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Oh, I didn't hit record. Damn it, again?